to know is most of us know what's the problem with Portland. Okay, so yeah, I know it's the NBA season is over because the draft's coming up. And now Portland is in a big decline. I mean, Sue Henderson, Victor Wembanyama, and I can't remember for who else, but there's the Alabama player number 24, pop up him right here, but he is supposed to be he got in trouble. I still don't know though, because I think he had a gun and legal gun possession at the school of Alabama University, but he was in tied. But still, we don't know yet. So, obviously, they're in a crisis. I mean, they can either build around to Henderson, but do they even know is he worth getting at the number three pick? Or are they going to trade the number three pick and try and get a superstar? Who would they get though? Like, are they going to get 38 year old, year old LeBron? No, he's not going to trade from the Lakers a year away from his son. Because, I mean, what was Bryce and Bronny? He might turn out to be a natural talent superstar at USC. But why would the Bron want to trade to another team? I say they offered him a four year, $285 million contract. Now, they don't even have the cap space because they have, most likely, they're going to have to sign Jeremy Grant for a four-year, $133 million offer. Now, do they want to do that? No. But do they have, are they most likely going to? Yes. Now, does Jeremy Grant even deserve that much money? I mean, he didn't play that good with the Pistons. He didn't play that good with Joe Bezos. Does he deserve a $133 million contract? For only four years, like the Warriors, they gave Jordan Poole a hundred forty million dollar contract for four years. Do they need him now? No. Are they most likely going to come in the next year or two? Probably. They might do it this off season. They might try and find a new shooting guard slash point guard at the six. I mean, yes. Okay, Jordan Poole, six man of the year. Does that matter? It's not his point guard of the year, man. That's why Steph Curry. Okay, he's, Jordan Poole's not the most valuable asset. Like, Damian Lillard, he's the most valuable asset for Portland. They went to the playoffs so much with him that like, if you get rid of him now, because the ball is an injury and he's injury prone, almost every year, every game he plays, he's gonna get an injury or he's gonna play really good or he just won't play that good. Those are the three options with him. He's not going to be, oh, the play, the 2019, the game winning shot, Damian Lillard. He's not the 2014 game winning shot against Houston in game six. No, he is now moving on. I think that he's trying to get a trade to the Miami Heat. Him and Jimmy Butler, oh my gosh. I mean, who wouldn't cheer for that team? Everybody. If Jimmy Butler doesn't win this year's finals, it's either going to be Nuggets, who nobody expected at the regular season to even get pride past the first round. Like, last year, beat 4-1. Barely, um, barely got past game, uh, game 4, where they won. And they were up by, like, 30. Almost lost. So... Nobody probably expected that, but only. But now, look at them. They are probably the, they are the top team in the West. They are top tier right now. They are a top tier team. They are an S tier team. If I made a chart and put every single NF NBA team in there, the S tier teams are probably the Lakers, Warriors, Heat, um, Bucks, Celtics, and Nuggets. You guys probably like, why are all those teams in there? There's probably really other good teams now. There's not that much teams that deserve S tier. And teams with S tier for their players, Lakers, Warriors, Bucks ain't even made an X. The, the only really good player is Giannis. So, he, their best player, Kim Butler. Lakers have the blind AD. Warriors have Steph, Draymond, and Clay. Those are top tier teams. All the Portland Trail bases have is literally Game Leathered. What, they can get Shannon Sharp? Who, I mean, yeah, really good rookie season. Not that great, everything else, though. Now, we have to see how good they will do. Are they going to get rid of him? Are they going to get rid of Shannon Sharp and. Oh, Damian Lillard, 
just get a really good player, or are they going to do that and get rid of them to try and rebuild a new team around Scoot Henderson? Obviously, he probably wants a new team. I mean, if he doesn't get drafted. And also, he's a point guard. Doesn't have the greatest defense or the best shooting ability. Well, he can shoot, but not the best jumper ability. So, do you want that on your team? I mean, really. What else is he going to do for you? Okay. Next thing they got to work on is their options. Literally, their manager, general manager said, oh, we're going to get rid of the pick right away because we're not going to get number one, two, three, four, five, or six, seven. Obviously, they got number three because of luck. Pistons got number five. Unluckiest thing I've ever seen. Then the Rockets get four. They get 20 and 62 or something like that. Gets the fourth pick. Oh, but you get a team that beat them four times. It's number one overall pick. And also, number two pick was the Hornets. So, obviously, they're either going to get that Alabama player or Scoot Henderson, which they already have the medal. So, they're probably going to get the Alabama player because Miles Bridges can't play for them with his charges. And now, Victor Wamanyama, Greg Popovich has already been there. He's already had his full line. I think he's probably trying to visit um, Tony Parker or he was trying to visit Victor Wamanyama. Now, obviously, it's probably both. I mean, Tony Parker... He went there, but now it's a decision. The only top three players, and you have the number three pick, so top three players are Victor Yama, then you got that Alabama player, then you got Skew Henderson. What are you going to pick? Well, obviously, every team's trying to get Victor Wimanyama. Like, if he falls out of the top five, that would be, like, the most surprising and shocking. And, dude, that'd be in headlines. Victor Wimanyama gets knocked out of the top five for the draft. He gets selected and we're ninth overall. Dude, that'd be the most hilarious thing to some reporters. Stephen A. would probably the next day, and him and Kendrick Perkins would get an argument. Somehow, Kendrick Perkins would probably be like, I don't think women y'all might deserve to be in the top five. And it's even they just like, oh my god. And they just go back and forth. And everyone's like, it's the end of this episode. We're sending you something else. And then boom, Sports Center and all that. So, are they really going to be doing all this? Or are they going to make the right decision and pick the obvious pick? Now, we all know. So, the Trailblazers do need a point. Um a five or a four. I mean, yes, you have Joseph Nurkic, but you really want him to come down to your five when you can get a seven foot four player that's young. But a lot of things people don't talk about is like his lack of mobility. Victor Wamanyama has so much stuff that the media is hiding about him. And yeah, uh, I probably should make a video about that and talk about that. And obviously, you know, I'm gonna say 100 likes. I mean, 100 views in two weeks. Along with seven likes, I'll do it. But back to the topic, main topic. Now, the number three thing. Damon Lillard is trying to expect to call his trade. He's obviously trying to get traded. I mean, who doesn't want to be traded from Trailblazers? It's like, I'm surprised Shannon Sharp and Free Simons doesn't want to be traded. I mean, dude, really? Five man for Simons? If I hear Damon Lillard wants to be traded, I would say, if he doesn't want to be traded, I'm going to leave. Because, why do you want to be that guy who's not the top five player? It's not the top two players on your team. Hey, I bet if he went to the Pacers or P hey, number three guy, man. Dude, there's so much teams that would need Anthony Simons for him not to stay. Would be a thing, great thing for them. Well, I mean, if you only would leave if you're him, I mean... Not him, but, you know, Anthony Simons. The only reason he would leave is if Dan Miller would say, no. But, like, wouldn't you want to stay because you have a really good guy, who, who really good player, who could be a Hall of Famer at some point? 
Yeah, you want to, but if he's getting injured and he's always injury prone, but the team comes to you. I mean, the last game of the season, they gave me 157 to 101. Think about, and they're home. The Warriors had the second worst away record in the NBA this year, and they still won by 56 in Portland. They were like, oh, Portland's a really good team, but they just can't play defense. No. They need both. That's why they're going to get Skew Henderson, but I think that he's going to be a bust. I don't think he's going to be the valuable asset they need. So, obviously, they're going to need to get somebody that's actually good. He doesn't get injured, and he has a good jump shot. He can play very well defense, and he can be the five, and he can be the one. He can be the two, too. Put him at shooting guard. Skew Henderson doesn't have to be the point guard, the leader of the team. The only time he'd be the point guard is if Anthony Simons has to be shooting guard because Damian Lillard's out, which will most likely happen for half the season on 30 games. So, yeah, what are they going to do if he, when like say, Sue Henderson hasn't been the most injuries, but he has gotten injured a lot. So, let's just see how the next season goes and let's see how the draft goes. If you want to make me, me have make the vim uh, if you want me to make a victor women yeah, I'm a sure like and subscribe click the bell icon for more videos like this and that's what I have to say for this video I'm out